In this video, we'll discuss basic calculations of square roots without using a calculator. So let us start with two different questions. Here we have the square root of 9 and the square root of 16. And let's compare that answer to the square root of 9 plus the square root of 16. So in a previous video, we learned how to find the square root of a value. So the square root of 9 is equal to 3, and the square root of 16 is equal to 4. So 3 plus 4 is equal to 7. But if I take the square root of 9 plus 16, inside of the square root, I can first add up these two values. So 9 plus 16 is 25. And the square root of 25 is equal to 5. Now notice the two sums look almost exactly the same. The only difference is in the first sum, we added two square roots together. And in the second one, we added together inside of the square root. So in the first example, we first take the square root of 9 and the square root of 16. And that result we add together. But in the second example, because it's all under one square root, we first do the calculation inside of the square root to find 25. And that answer is equal to 5. So even though they look the same, they do not produce the same answer. Let us look at another example. Let's say we have a square root of 100 minus a square root of 36. And let's compare that to taking the square root of 100 minus 36. So in our first example, the square root of 100 is 10, and the square root of 36 is 6, so it will be 10 minus 6, which is equal to 4. But in our second example, as we have just learned, we first do the calculation inside of the square root. So 100 minus 36 is 64, and the square root of 64 is 8. So notice again, even though we are using similar values, the answers are different. And the reason is, in our first example, we first need to find the values of two square roots separately. And in our second example, we first do the calculation inside of the square root and then find the square root of a value. Let us look at an example of multiplication. So the square root of 9 multiplied with the square root of 4. And now we have the square root of 9 multiplied with 4. So in our first example, the square root of 9 is equal to 3 multiplied with the square root of 4, which is equal to 2. And that is equal to 6. And in our second example, as in the previous examples, we first do the calculation inside of the square root. So 9 times 4 is equal to 36, and that is also equal to 6. Now, please don't try and take a shortcut and say, but these are the same, and therefore the addition must be the same. The best method is to first find the square roots of individual numbers and then multiplying them together. And good practice is, if you have a square root with a calculation on the inside, is to first do the calculation on the inside of the square root and then find the square root of one value only. The same principle applies in division. So if we take a square root of 100 and we divide it by the square root of 4 and we compare that to the square root of 100 divided by 4. So in our first example, the square root of 100 is 10, and we're going to divide that by the square root of 4, which is 2. So that answer is 10 divided by 2 is 5. And in our second example, we first do the calculation inside of the square root. So 100 divided by 4 is equal to 25, and the square root of 25 is 5. Now we've noticed with addition and subtraction, we got different values, but with multiplication and division, we got the same values. Now, in your higher grades, you would learn why this is true, but the best practice is to only take the square root of one number. 
So once there's a calculation inside of the number, first complete the calculation and then take the square root of one number only. Let us look at two more examples. Let's try and find the square root of 0 0.04. Now, if you don't want to use your calculator, you can rewrite 0 0.04 as 4 over 100. What you can do, because it's division, and you would learn this in later grades, is I can say the square root of 4 divided by the square root of 100. So because it's division on the inside, I can take the square root and divide it into two parts. So I can take the numerator and take the square root of that and the square root of the denominator separately. But that only applies to division and multiplication. So the square root of 4 is 2 and the square root of 100 is 10. So our answer is 2 over 10. And if I simplify that, that will be 1 over 5. Okay, let's look at one more example. Let's try and find the square root of 2 and 7 over 9. Now we notice that this is a mixed number. And the best process now is to take the mixed fraction and write it as an improper fraction. And I hope you have learned this already. So it will be 2 times 9 plus 7. So 2 times 9 is 18 plus 7 is 25 over 9. And now we have a similar situation as before. Because we have the vision on the inside, we can take the square root and split it up into two parts. So it will be the square root of 25 divided by the square root of 9. The square root of 25 is 5 and the square root of 9 is 3. So the answer is 5 over 3 or we can say 1 and 2 thirds.